It's amazing to me to think about uh, the Singer 12 New Family sewing machine being developed and beginning to sell during the Civil War uh, in the United States. This was the first reliable, uh, easy to use sewing machine to come from a combination of inventions of previous sewing machines. And it's the one that launched Singer into the successful company that it became and, and made Isaac Singer rich. This is my Abby. She's an 1881 treadle, uh, model 12, and I call her Abby for obvious reasons. She's got abalone inlay. And you can see that she's been used heavily. She's had a hard working life, but she's still in pretty good shape. And she's a fiddle bass. That's that nice, pretty curvy bass on these. They called them fiddle basses back then. And these sold very, very well when they came out. And over the years, they changed quite a bit with new innovations, and new improvements. So you will see a lot of variation in these machines. They were around for 39 years, almost 40 years, they were in production. So they do go through a number of changes. This one has a lot of the older features. And I want to go through some of the things you need to know to use these machines. And first off, you need to know how to set the needle. Now, the needles on these are very different than what we see today on our standard, typical needles, and uh, primarily the domestic machines have similar needles, but these are different. And you do have to have these special needles. They are 12 by 1 size, and they have a rounded shank, uh, which means they don't have a flat side, which a lot of our typical domestic needles have today. So they're a little harder to get set in your machine correctly, and I'm going to show you how to do that. And this is basically the instructions for setting the needle that, that came in the manual originally. I'm going to try and follow that as close as I can here. And they tell you at first to put the point of the needle down in the hole in the needle plate and slide the shank up into the side of the uh, needle clamp. You can see it sticking up there. You want to get it in there. Basically, you're just going to get it tight enough at this point that it'll stay in place because you, you do want to move it a little bit later here. This is putting it into the needle bar. Now, the needle bars on the top area, they have this, this etched in line you can see with the end of my tweezers here. And that's an important thing. They don't all have that. This is actually not Abby here. This is my other machine. Abby doesn't have that line, but she does have a little, a little etched edge that I can use to set this. But you want this down the top of the, the face plate here, at the level of that. And after you get that set, you can go in with a, a fine point needle or pen and you want to look for this long groove down the side of the needle and down at the bottom where the eye is, you put that pin in there and you, you turn it so it's facing you directly facing you. Now this is a side view, so I've turned it 90 degrees with that long thing and the eye facing toward the, the person sitting at the sewing machine, basically. And you use that pin to kind of hold it in place while you tighten up your needle clamp screw so it'll stay in place. And this is what you kind of want it to look like after you've set it in there. You can see that long groove in the hole. And then the, my little etched line up here is up there at the top, right at the edge of that face plate. Now the bobbin and the shuttle on these older machines is quite different than what you find today. This is a long bobbin. It's called a long bobbin for obvious reasons. It's a big spindle. And this little shuttle is called a boat shuttle because it kind of looks like a boat. And that's what a lot of these old transverse shuttle machines had. And they all had their own designs and ways of handling the tension coming off that bobbin. 
and we'll talk more about that in a little bit here. I'm going to show you how to load this uh, wind the bobbin here. And it has at the end a little spring loaded cup that holds that bobbin in tight and then you can just push on that and get that bobbin out. And to wind the bobbin, use the instructions out of the manual for that. Basically, you put it in the little winder system, and the, there's little little divots at the end of each one of the ends of this winder, and the points of the bobbin fit into that to hold it in place. And they tell you in the manual that to start your, your thread, you want to pinch it in between the end of the bobbin and that little winder wheel there, and that holds it pretty snug. It's a nice way to start it off. Some people wrap it around a number of times and start it. This is what I found to work best, and this is what they tell you in the manual. The other thing you want to do is release the clutch on the machine. You do that by pulling it out, turning it a little bit, and that frees up the wheel, and you don't run the machine, the rest of the machine, while you're winding your bobbin. So basically, to wind your bobbin here, you're going to be taking your right hand, you hold your thread in the left, you take your right hand and you push that wheel up against the hand wheel to start turning the bobbin. Winding bobbins are pretty critical. You want to get it wound as smooth as possible because that's what impacts how it comes off that bobbin and how the tension is from the bobbin case. So you want to go real smooth and get it as even and as smooth as possible. You get a little more thread on there when you're real smooth. And it just makes the tension coming off much better and makes it allows it to wind off of that spindle much more evenly. This is how you create the best stitch this thing can make. And they also in, mention in the manual that they want it to have a trifle higher at each end of that bobbin than the center. Uh, it's probably because that way it'll feed off of that bobbin a little more smoothly and evenly, so your tension is working properly. Now I have this thread coming from a spool on top of the machine and running through the first eye on the head and then down to my hand and I'm holding it back a ways from the, from the spindle as you can see and uh, you don't want to overfill these you just want them to where they're full but not going to rub against the edge of your little bobbin shuttle or they won't work properly. Here I have a nicely filled bobbin ready to use. Okay, now we're going to talk about threading that little boat shuttle, which for these machines can get pretty complicated. And I've got this highlighted in green information from the original manual about how to do this. So I'm going to read through this because it can be kind of complicated and confusing. And I'm going to say, I'm going to read it. it Pass the thread through the bottom long slot in at the upper slot and thence over to the tension holes, passing it through the one nearest the blunt end first, then through as many holes as may be necessary to obtain the tension required, always finishing, however, by passing it through the hole nearest the point, either from inside outward or from outside inward. In the latter case, pass it out through the slot below, and finally, in every case, under the spring, under that leaf spring. A very specific direction, and we're going to try and show you how to do that. I've seen it done a number of ways online, and uh, none of them follow that exactly, so we'll try that. Here you can see where that little spring-loaded cup is at the tip, at the pointed in, and you'll set your bobbin down in there first, and then on the other side is another little indentation that the other side, the point on the other side of the bobbin will pop down into. So to get your bobbin in your 
case, you want to make sure first, as in the instructions say, to have the thread over the top of, or top of the bobbin, not coming from the bottom. So here we're going to put the point down with the pointed end of the shuttle first in that little spring loaded cup. If we get it there, we can pop down the back end and it's secured in there with the thread coming over top, as it says in the instructions. Okay, now we're going to run that end of the thread from that bottom slot first and the inside out. And then to the top slot on the outside in. And then from there, we're going to go over to the hole nearest the blunt end. Now you can see it's going over that bar, that side. So now we're going to run it across over to that hole right there, the nearest the blunt end, as it says in the instructions. Now after you get it there, you can put it through the other holes as much as you need to in order to get the tension you need. Now tension on a bobbin is where you always start to adjust tension for any machine, whether they're old or new. And so this is critical. It's critical to get your bobbins set right. So you run it in and out of those holes depending on the thread you're using, the fabric you're using, the material the thread's made out of. I mean, there's a lot of variables involved here. So it's critical to set this right in order to get that much sought after perfect stitch. Okay, so here, just for an example, we're going to go from that back hole and then from the outside in from from the blunt end to the second hole in so I'm going to finish by going out the inside to the outside that very last hole towards the point I always want to finish it there according to the instructions Okay, so that's one level of tension, and then the very final thing you always do, according to the instruction, is go under that leaf spring. So there, that's a setting. Now, how you change your tension. To regulate the tension, test the tension of the shuttle thread by drawing it towards the round end of the shuttle. If it draws as tightly as it will bear without breaking, it is right for the fabrics of a firm texture. All right, so here we're just pulling it to see if it's nice and smooth going forward. And it is, it's running nice, it's not breaking. So now, in order to test it, if it's too tight or not, we're gonna pull it all the way towards the blood end it and it's okay there too. Now if it broke, it would be too tight. You'd want to reduce the number of holes that you've got it in. So you want it to be able to go swing back and forth across that leaf spring without breaking. And how tight it needs to be, tension is a tough one. Now I wanted to show you these two bobbins, but the upper one is from, is from at, um, Abby and the lower one is from Winnie and you can see a lot of wear on Abby's button uh, bobbin case or the shuttle where there's all these wear lines around the holes somebody who used this machine a lot would wrap the threads around over that edge and it wears down like you could see there I don't know if that's right or not it will wear down your bobbin case quite a bit, your little shuttle, and it's just an example of something, another way of adjusting that, but I, I don't think I would do it that way, but that's how Abby's case was used. 
Okay, now I'm, I'm going to thread this again a little differently. So we're starting again with the thread coming out that back hole near the blood end. And this time I'm going to go in that very front hole near the point, which means according to the instructions that I need to have it come out that little slot below. So we're going to try and get that in there. See why I try to use tweezers a lot for doing this. It's kind of tough to try and do without tweezers or very stiff thread. So here I struggle a little bit trying to get this through that that little slot that's underneath the holes there. But that's, that's what it says to do you. When you're dealing with those holes, you want it to go in the blunt, out the front near the point. And depending on whether you go in from the outside or out from the inside, for that last one, you might use that little slit down there. But again, as always, you're going to want to put the very last thing, you're going to want to slide it through that little leaf string as the final step always, according to the instructions. So what I've been doing here is trying to this thing together with the instruction. Now I did find when I was using this machine, I was using Abby to do some pieces, which you'll see me do a little bit towards the end of this video. I got an excellent little stitch out of her nice balanced, even, smooth stitch when I did this right. If I had it wrong, it didn't do very well. Now here I'm going to put it in the machine. So here's loading the shuttle and bobbin into the machine. That's the little shuttle carrier there that goes back and forth in a transverse shuttle. You drop it in there. Now you turn it sideways so that leaf spring is going to be facing up. Your thread will be coming out the top side. Right there. Now my thread's ready to go. I close that enough. Don't pinch it tight because it's going to have to pull that thread up to the needle here. So threading the main head of the machine, the top threads, they're basically pretty simple. There's kind of a diagram showing and the instructions for how to thread it. Fairly straightforward and simple up top. It's the bobbin that's tough. So basically you'll go through that little thread guide up top in the front down through those tension discs. You want to make sure you get it slid up in there real snug up in those tension discs. You want it all the way in there. They're critical. And then after you get it through and into your tension discs real good, you want to put it through your take-up lever eye and that's up there. And then down here, you'll the last one going through is the little uh, needle clamp guide and this one is a hole. Now some of the later models are different. So there's variations in this uh, needle clamp guide. You'll have to look at your specific machine to see which kind you have. And then you lift your needle up and get it threaded. And now these always thread from front to back. So your eye, you should see your eye facing you. So we're going front to back to thread it. And then after you get it threaded, you can bring your bobbin thread up by moving your hand wheel and lifting it up and bring, drawing your thread up from below. And now you're all set. So, okay, now we're going to talk about setting the and testing the upper tension. And tension can be a difficult issue. I'm going to read this. The tension of the needle thread is regulated by turning the tension screw. To test tension, draw the thread downward from the check lever, turning the screw to the right until the thread draws tightly as it will bear without breaking. And that's for heavy fabrics they're talking about. And here I've got Winnie set up to kind of show you. Here's on top, here's where that tension adjustment is. And on the older machines, it's in the front, the oldest machines, the originals, 
the newer machines have it up top so there's two different locations they talk about pulling it down that's kind of misleading it's going to depend a lot on your thread on your fabric and setting tension on any sewing machine old or new can be a trial and there's more questions about that and problems with that than probably just about anything on a sewing machine of any kind but uh, these are even extra hard to deal with so there can be real simple uh, or not simple but real delicate changes will make all the difference so it takes some time and testing um, but always always start with your bobbin setting first on any sewing machine okay so now we've got it the needle in we've got the bobbin set we've got our upper tension set we tested it we've got a nice stitch and now we can sew and one of the things I really enjoy about these Model 12s is that very satisfying little click that it makes when it sews. It just, there's something just really rewarding about the sound of these machines. So I'm just gonna let you listen to it sew. Now this is Abby I'm sewing on here and I've been working on a piecing a table runner and she has just been doing fabulous, I think. She uh, is probably sewing today as just as well as she did over 129 years ago or so when she was off the factory line. And uh, I'm just real pleased with how she's running today. And that's what's so rewarding about these old machines is they just do not quit and they sew wonderfully. And uh, I just uh, love using them. So I'd been piecing this entire uh, table runner with her and she's just done great. I've had no problems whatsoever. Once you get things set up on these machines, they sew very well. It's really fun to have one of the original old machines that got the Singer Company going and got sewing for the masses actually uh, going and it was the first really usable machine for just about everyone so it's it's fun to have a couple of these machines because they're just beautiful old things and just a joy to, to explore and study and play with if you, if you like your old vintage machines and it's just nice to have these If you manage to, to find one and you're struggling with it, uh, I hope you'll keep working with it because uh, they're very worth having here. And here's that beautiful stitch that Abby's making and it's just perfect. And looking back over time, these machines, uh, it was amazing that they were made during the Civil War and the country was in turmoil and, and yet, uh, came out and I'm sure they played a role in, in reconstruction and people getting back on their feet after the devastating Civil War in the, in the States and uh, just, a, just a joy to have so I hope you can find one and, and hope this video was helpful to help you learn how to use these things because they are quite different and uh, can be a challenge, especially dealing with these bobbin cases and the tension. And these bobbin cases and setting that tension, it just depends more than anything on what works best to get the stitch you need. And following the directions may not always be the best. You just have to do trial and error, see what works best with your machine and with your threads and with the fabric you're using because that makes all the difference. Uh, on your tension, it varies greatly and you have to learn to handle your bobbins on any sewing machine. So enjoy using your Singer Model 12s and hope this was helpful.